I came to my first Loria meeting and it wasn't long ago that I sat in a presentation by a friend of mine, somebody who's become a good friend of mine, uh, named Adam Adams, who is from uh, Colorado. And he came to one of these meetings and basically shared with us the five ways to get into multifamily investing, into apartment investing. So I, it was the first time that I really considered that possibility for myself and uh, considered that I could do it because he looked me in the eye and said I could do it, right? Sometimes that's all it takes. And so that's what I'm here for tonight is to tell you all, if you want to, you can invest in large scale apartment buildings out of state. <laughs> um, you can do it here too. Um, it's a different game here because of pricing and you can't really cash flow multifamily properties here but um, nonetheless, it's doable here. However, we buy in markets that both cash flow and appreciate. So we have, uh, we have about 600 doors in Columbus, Ohio and Oklahoma City. Um, they're worth about $50 million. And uh, what else Chelsea will say about our report? This is Chelsea Garver, one of my two partners that's here tonight. Make give Chelsea a hand. Chelsea's way better looking than me and she's super smart. So, um, you know, you're welcome to approach either one of us after this and we'll, um, we'll share whatever we got with you. So, um, I'm not here to talk about me. Um, I, I will share our story a little bit because it's relevant to the topic tonight, but I'm really more here to share with you how we went from in the middle of 2020 not only owning no properties, but actually being upside down in a development project to now owning about $50 million worth of multifamily doors. Um, obviously that's quite a ride and there's a lot that we learned and a lot of mistakes we made and, uh, and there's a lot of things to pass on to you. Um, but the biggest thing, my biggest intention tonight is that one of you gets that you can do this and doesn't. And so I wanna know like in a year, a year and a half or two years, I want somebody to come up to me and say, you remember that time you talked? I listened to you and I went out and did it. And hopefully you're talking to me in the meantime because I can help you in the meantime. And we'll, we'll kind of get to that. But um, there's no PowerPoint. So your job is to take notes, uh, be really engaged, be really present. There will be a quiz at the end. Um, and there'll be, I've got three of the most influential books that have been important to my trajectory. And uh, these will be given away at the end for trivia questions about the presentation. So um, again, the main message is, if you're here, you probably have what it takes to do this, okay? Um, again, you know, my story is, I'll just keep this really brief, but I started out single family flipping, uh, with my other business partner, Carl York, who's not here tonight, but he and I started in, actually I was in flipping in 06, 07, 08 myself, got out at the crash, um, kind of got my butt kicked a little bit and, um, learned a lot but got back into flipping in 2011 and did that for about seven years as hard as we could, like everything we got. And we never did it smart. Like I didn't come to RIA meetings. I didn't have the, uh, the people around me that were models on how to scale flipping, which is doable. You can scale flipping, right? Um, I know people that flip 200 houses a year, but I, that wasn't a, a direction that we wanted to take. So the, the direction that we did take eventually was after about seven years of flipping hard, we figured we needed to um, really scale up. And we thought development was the way to do it. Remember Randall? Yeah. Um, and so we got into some land entitlement projects uh, where we took a parcel of land, usually downtown, and we would subdivide it into, uh, into 
you know, high density projects, usually townhomes, and then we would sell that, that project to a, uh, to a developer or a builder and make some good money that way. And that worked pretty well. And then we thought we tried our hand at, at building uh, ground up. And so we bought a couple projects that were uh, high end luxury townhome projects, multifam, and, uh, and really got our butts kicked. And that's a different talk. <laughs> um, there's lots of stuff that went into that and lots of lessons that came out of it. But the biggest lesson was that it was pointed out to us by the universe or God or, you know, that this was not what we were supposed to be doing. Um, and we listened, okay? In the meantime, the same person we bought those projects from brought us a 12-unit apartment uh, building in South Salt Lake. And we sat down to underwrite it, and all of a sudden we've got cash flow, we've got rents, we've got NOI, we've got rents that pay the bills and pay the mortgage and, and uh, pay your investor and pay us. And that was something that was so foreign to us at that point, it was something we hadn't even considered. And basically, when I remember Carl and I looking at each other going, can you shoot any holes in this deal? I mean, this is awesome. There's like, it's not speculative. For the first time in our careers, we were doing something that was not speculative in that this is a project that we can evaluate very precisely based on its income and we can pro project what it's gonna get in rents and how it's gonna pay the bills and how much money we're gonna make on an online basis. So we bought that project, we uh, did a head to toe remodel. Long story short, we, we did well. We actually sold it um, to capitalize on some of the stuff we were up, upside down on from that previous life. And um, basically ended up uh, kind of seeing the light, so to speak, with multifamily. And ever since then, we've been singularly focused. That's a really hard word to say. <laughs> Especially with a dry mouth. I need, I need some water. Can I just keep this over This is my buddy, Emmanuel. We went camping together about, what, six weeks ago now? Yeah. Uh, it's, and it's amazing. It's, I, I should have said this to start off. Like, some of the faces here I've looked up to for a long time. It's surreal to be standing in front of you talking, honestly. Um, it's humbling, and I, I appreciate the opportunity very much. So, um, so we basically went all in on commercial multifamily. Now, commercial multifamily is five units and up, right? How many people own multifamily, any units? Two units, three units, four units? Right on. Um, how many people would own multifamily if they could, or if the... <laughs> If, how many people would own large scale multifamily if, if, if you could, if you could figure it out or somebody could show you the way? Oh, awesome. Sure, thank you. Should we trade? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, um, so, basically, we did a lot of things to gear up towards buying big properties. And by big properties, I mean $4 million deals. $10 million deals. Um, we just bought a, 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 a $10 million deal in Ohio. Um, we're working on a, on a $30 million deal uh, that will close in about 60 days. Um, and I'm gonna share with you some of the resources and some of the revelations that we had during that whole process. And I, I hope that this creates an opening for you guys to see that you know, I've never thought, I've either never thought about apartments before, or I've thought about apartments and it seems too big, it seems too daunting, and I don't have the money, I don't have the experience, I don't have the connections. Um, I want to start shooting some holes in that stuff for you guys tonight. So, um, uh, yeah, so basically a little bit about me, uh, and then I'll move on to the good stuff. Um, I'm a passionate skier, mountain biker, Love the camp. I surf a little bit, but I'm um, not very good at surfing. Still have Joey. 
Joey Dog is my four-legged kid. Single, never been married, no kids. Um, and uh, th those are kind of my, my passions. I've been a realtor in the past. I, I just gave up my license here recently um, because it wasn't really relevant to what we do at all. And uh, it was just a matter, it, nothing wrong with being a realtor. I think it's awesome. Um, and you can do a lot of good things in investing as a realtor, but for us, for me, it wasn't relevant to buying properties in Ohio or Oklahoma, which is, those are the two markets that we own in. So, um, I'm really gonna have to sign back on here. Now, I gotta make sure that stays on, I wonder. I'll just keep putting the cursor. How's that? All right, doesn't wanna come up. Okay, um, so, uh, let me just let me get back here. Um, I want to just once again mention Slurria and also Utah Rhea. I'm actually on the board of Utah Rhea. Um, guys, like everything that you need to do deals is in this room. Your next partner, your next investor, your next lender, your next wholesaler, your next deal finder, everything you need, title reps, um, hard money guys, Matt Strong, Matt Atkinson, uh, uh, you know, somebody like Mike Burns is here that can basically share with you his massive wealth of experience in doing what he's done. And so, if you're not a member right now, I'm just going to say, step up and put some skin in the game. Because if you're not willing to put skin in the game here, at a, what is it, 150 bucks, 125 bucks a year, what are you doing? Like, everything's here. And... All, all of the education you need, all the inspiration you need is in this room. And I've been in masterminds with multiple people in this room, Matt and Matt, um, or Matt and Mike, brother. And, uh, you know, like the, the I, I already shared with you that the, the really the reason that I'm here tonight and have done what we've done is it, start, it all started, it, not in this room, but it started in the auditorium. Yeah, this way. Um, and it, it was in a meeting just like this. So if that doesn't speak volumes, I don't know what does. And, and there's something about putting skin in the game. If you believe in energy, you are putting, you're, you're putting attention on something, which is your business and your career. And uh, what is it? Energy flows where attention goes. Is that it? Okay. Yeah, the focus, exactly. Thank you. And I have not signed up for a Tony Robbins event yet. I know it's going to come up tonight. Start tomorrow. Okay, so. Matt's always hitting me up about Tony Robbins. I love it. I, I, need, I need that. Um, so, uh, so basically, um, multifamily investing, let's kind of dive in here. So I'm not going to spend too much time on why multifamily. I'll just share with you that, uh, it, again, it's not a speculative thing in the way that the rest of real estate investing is, in my opinion. Um, it is, a lot of people call it the ideal investment because, and the ideal is an acronym. So I is income, D is depreciation, E is Chelsea. Equity, equity growth, thank you. Um, a is appreciation, and L is leverage, okay? And we can get into each one of those and talk about each component. And I'll just say this, that with multifamily and, and other commercial asset classes, but multifamily in particular, you can buy properties that cash flow to the point and, and rents, rents are high enough that they pay your debt service. So your tenants are paying your mortgage. They pay the bills. They pay the expenses of the property. They, um, they, they pay your investors that you may have raised money from to get the deal done, and they pay you. What else is gonna do that? You know, maybe industrial, maybe retail, uh, maybe, um, you know, restaurants. Like, you can invest in different types of real estate that may or may not do that 
But out of all of those, multifamily is the only one that addresses a universal need, which is housing. Everybody needs a place to live. So that makes it somewhat risk mitigated in my opinion. And again, I don't wanna deep dive too much into that, uh, but being something that's universally needed is, a, is an insulation from a downturn often, right? And, and people call multifamily investing recession resistant. I stay away from saying recession proof because I think that's overstepping and it's a crystal ball statement. But recession resistant is something that you can trace historically and look at default rates. In 2008, the default rate on single fam was 7%. The default rate on multifam was 0.7%. Okay, so that, and that speaks volumes right there, that basically if you, you know, I'll tell you what we're getting, we're, what we're doing to get ready for the downturn is we're buying properties that cash flow now on fixed rate debt that, uh, that we're planning on holding for at least five years. And we, fit, we, we feel that that is enough of a runway for whatever downturn and or recession or whatever we end up in to, for us to kind of float it out, right? In the meantime, our cash flow is probably gonna go up because inflation raises rents. Our expenses will probably go up a little bit because inflation raises expenses. But, um, but this is a, th these are properties that if bought properly are going to, um, they're gonna survive and they're gonna profit through a recession. And when everything comes back, hopefully, into the next economic cycle, we're gonna be in good shape. So that's what we're doing. We're, we have not put our pencils down. We're still buyers, uh, obviously, and we're, we're still writing letters of intent on properties. We just wrote one on Friday on a $20 million deal uh, in Columbus. So, uh, so we're staying with it. Um, I, I, I just gotta say a few things about this. This is by far the most fun I've ever had professionally. Like, I, the passion, my passion level is really high. I love it. Um, I often work in the middle of the night just because I feel like it. Uh, and, I, you know, I have a podcast. I've had a podcast for two and a half years called The Apartment Gurus. You guys can look that up. Apartment Gurus. There's, uh, we've got 110 episodes. And almost all of them are, they feature really high level guests, people that have killed it in this industry. Sometimes they'll feature somebody that just started, so you get a feel for what they're doing and how they're being successful. Uh, and it's basically, this, this podcast is 100% geared at getting you going in apartments, or if you're already going, keeping you going and moving to the next level. Right, leveling up. So, um, the most the most important thing, in my opinion, about all of this, and you guys either either gonna love this or hate it, is your mindset, right? And you hear that all the time in, in real estate investing. But you want to become, if you want to do this level of business, you need to become a mindset master. You have to become Jedi-like uh, on an inner life level, right? So uh, another way of saying this is that the most important real estate to develop is the six inches between your ears. You guys might have heard that before. Um, and so chances are you guys know how to, how to shift your mindset, uh, or at least you have some clues of some work that you could do, some seminars you could take, some therapy you could do, some coaching programs you could do. Um, and I'll share with you some of what made a shift for me personally and, made, and for our company. But if you are able to be a master of your mindset, your limiting beliefs will, be, will get shattered because you're gonna realize that just like anything else in your head, your limiting beliefs are a story. They're nothing more than a story. 
and they have no basis in reality. Now you might be able to say, well, I've got evidence for this, and you know, I, I tried this and it didn't work and blah, blah, blah. Be real with yourself and recognize that you've come to a conclusion about yourself or your abilities to get things done that probably isn't true. And so, like, this is probably the biggest thing I want you guys to take home tonight is doing the hard work that it takes to become a master of your mindset. And the, the reality is, you know, again, you guys have all heard this, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. You guys have heard that, right? Um, that's, that's it. If you believe you can, and you're willing to, to do the work and take action, nothing will stop you, right? If you're committed and you believe you can. If you believe you can't, you don't believe you can, rather, there's nothing that you can do to get around that, in my opinion. There's, there, it's just, now you may be able to sweat your way through a deal and maybe that shifts your mindset some because you got through it, but if you can bust through these limiting beliefs and whether that's tonight or in the next month or in the next year, that's going to open up a, like a like space in your head and space in your business to get things done that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get done. So um, I'm going to have a list of of uh, ten or twelve action steps at the end of this, and I'll share with you again kind of what I think it takes to do this work. Um, in terms of the mindset stuff. But for me personally, um, it's it's like absolutely the, the most important kind of core level work that you'll ever do. And it's so worth doing. Those of us that have done it, I know there's a lot of you in here that have. Uh, and I'll just be real, like if you've healed your wounds, like from our childhood, from, you know, wherever, and you let go of the constraints in your life that keep you from high level, you know, physical life, emotional life, business, financial, etc. Life can get really, really good. And I'm not even really talking about apartments right now. Uh, I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about uh, a peaceful inner life, um, a productive inner life. And to me, if you do this stuff, the rest of this stuff will work out. Uh, and it's a matter of just kind of doing the wax on, wax off, like doing the work, taking the steps. So um, I, I wrote down, there's nothing better than inner alignment, right? There's nothing better than being aligned with who you really are. And, or, and it's not who you think you are, it's who you really are in life that you want to be aligned with. And so again, you might be asking like, what's this have to do with apartment investing, dude? Um, and I would just say, look, when we're identified with our thoughts, our judgments, our doubts, we are prone to accepting our limiting beliefs. That's the bottom line. And, that, and again, the limiting beliefs, not to be repetitive, but limiting beliefs are the only thing standing between you and standing up here telling 100 people how to do this. Um, so you need to get rid of your stories, um, and you need to, to get rid of stories, you need to recognize them as stories to begin with, right? And this is, I'll, I'll just reference uh, Landmark Education real quickly. It's something I've done, a few of my buddies have done, Stacy's done, has Dallas done it? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's high level personal development work, really. And one of the very first distinctions that you get in the education is getting real with your stories, getting real with that, with the fact that we create our stories. Like that's how we're wired, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? One of the most important distinctions for me that I got from a coach early on, like 07 or so, uh, Matthew Ferry, has anybody heard of Matthew Ferry? Um, yeah, so Mike, have anybody heard of Mike Ferry? Realtors? Yeah. Really? Nobody else? Yes. Like the, the most famous uh, real estate coach probably ever is Mike Ferry. His son Matthew Ferry uh, was, 
it basically took, you know, Mike Ferry is, is very regimented, script oriented, disciplined, you know, X, Y, Z gets this stuff done and very formulaic. His son, Matthew, is kind of all about the love and the, and the bliss, right? He's, he's about being in alignment. You know, not, not, not his words, my words, but um, I went to a seminar that he gave in LA in 07, and he distinguished the drunk monkey. Has anybody heard this term before? Drunk monkey? Dude, thank you for raising your hand. You're like, nobody else is. <laughs> Um, I appreciate it. Um, the drug monkey just refers to the, the chatter in your brain that's kind of always there. And we all have it. And it's the voice that is judgmental of you, of other people. It's the voice that's constantly analyzing and pontificating and trying to predict danger and try to keep you out of it. It's fear-based, right? And there, it's part of our system. It's, part, it's literally part of our biology. And, and it's something that really runs the show unless you have taken the time and the, and the work and the effort to distinguish it from who you really are because we're not really our drunk monkey. I promise this is getting back to a part of investing, guys. Um, and for me, like that was foundational work because when it came to confronting limiting beliefs three, four years ago, when we got into apartments, I was able to like pretty much on a dime say, okay, that limiting belief, that, that fear-based thing that is going on in my head is not real, right? And I've, I've done enough of that at this point to be able to shift away from the monkey mind, the drug monkey, and, uh, and, and really refocus on what I was about, what I'm after, what, what my intentions are. And so, uh, that was a huge, huge revelation for me. I, I remember actually crying, like when I when I finally got that, the drunk monkey. It was a huge relief for me because it was like, I mean, I'm not that jerk. I'm not that jerk that looks at me in the mirror and, and insults me and insults other people and um, is is constantly afraid. And you know, that was a massive relief for me. So. Hopefully that hits home for some of you guys. I know some of you have heard that before. Um, back to multifamily, I'll stick with multifamily this time, I promise, <laughs> no tangents. Um, does anybody, has anybody heard of a syndication before? Yeah, lots of you guys, okay. Um, a syndication, when people syndicate a deal, what that means is that they're raising capital from multiple sources, sometimes, dozens of sources, and they're bringing in those investors, those, those capital sources, into one deal, and they're using that money as the down payment on the loan for the deal. Uh, they're, they're using it for closing costs. They're using it for acquisition fees. Does everybody know that you, you typically get an acquisition fee when you buy a property? Two to four percent? Two to four percent of 20 million? We make that when we buy the property, okay? So, and, and it comes from capital that you raise. So um, basically, I, I, I'm gonna make this very, very simple, but in a syndication, there's the general partners or the GP, and that's us as, as operators, as the ones that went out and found the deal, negotiated the deal, put it under contract, do the due diligence, et cetera, all the things that it takes to get to the finish line. And then there's the limited partners of the LPs. And the LPs are, pa are purely passive investors. They have no role other than to bring capital to the deal and uh, to sign their check and then, and then sit back and collect returns uh, on an ongoing basis throughout the ownership of the property. And they collect a big check on the back end when the property is either refinanced or sold. So um, that, that's just a, a very basic definition of syndication. There's a question. Oh, okay, sorry, I thought you were raising your hand. Um, so and I'll, and I'll, this is gonna apply, this is gonna, that GPLP stuff and syndication and the ideal investment, 
um, we're going to kind of come back to. But I'm going to right now go into the five ways to get into a private investing, which was the title of this presentation. So um, hopefully you guys are ready to take notes. Um, this is kind of the, the the core of the presentation tonight, if you will. Um, and I'll just I'll just kind of bust through them here. So the first one is to go find a deal. It's the best way, in my opinion, the best way to get into apartment investing. You might say, well, I've never done any apartment investing. How do I go find a deal? You're gonna, I'm gonna have a number of action steps that are basically gonna fortify you and strengthen you to go out and get this stuff done, right? And we're gonna get to those in just a few minutes, but finding a deal, you can, you can either find those direct to seller uh, there's there's people here in Utah, Clay Rockwood, Brian Martino are very very good at going direct to seller and getting multifamily properties, usually smaller, like 20 unit, 40 unit type deals. But you can get any size deal by calling the owner of a property. We tried that for a long time, like a year and a half, and uh, and just weren't very successful. And what we found was. We were going, our priority has been all along to try to do 100 plus units, like 150 units, 200 units per deal, that sort of thing. And the people that own those, those properties are really savvy usually, and they're never going to sell you, some guy that just calls them, their property, they're going to they're gonna give it to a badass broker that's gonna go out and get multiple offers and expose it to the market and get the highest possible price for the property. So we have doubled down on brokers, on broker relations. So you can write down broker relations. This is a game that is, um, is very, very fruitful. When you get in with high level brokers and you become part of their, uh, their list of investors and they start you know, exposing you to these deals as they come on the market, either as a market deal or maybe an off-market deal, they're coming to you and, and saying, hey, we just got this listing and the, the seller doesn't really want to go public with it for whatever reason. That's where we found the best deals, is through our brokers. Um, and developing relationships with brokers is a long game. You know, it takes time. I mentioned, I'll just back up for a second, I mentioned that in 2020 we had actually a negative balance sheet and and now we're in the like 48 49 million range that didn't happen just in those 18 months that happened has anybody heard of uh, the analogy of of uh, planting a bamboo tree have you heard that yeah so basically with the band the, the way that bamboo grows is that you plant it and it, it spreads its roots for about five years. It never, ever breaks the surface of the ground, but you gotta keep watering it, nurturing it, paying attention to it, and then right around year five, boom, 50 foot plants, right? That just are huge. That's kind of what happened with us. We spent the previous two years, two and a half years uh, to, to 2020, building broker relationships, building investor relationships, learning the craft from paid mentors and paid coaches, and I'll get to those in a second, um, and, and, and building our team during that time. And then when 2020 came along, and tw actually 2021 was when we bought almost every property we own now, except for one we just closed on, um, we were ready, right? We knew how to write letters of intent. We knew how to negotiate offers. We knew how to underwrite deals. We knew how to do due diligence. We knew how to raise capital. We knew how to work with attorneys. And we hadn't done any of that, but we had invested a lot in building the resources and the knowledge to go out and do that. So finding a deal. Um, Crexi, has anybody heard of Crexi? C-R-E-X-I. I would highly recommend checking out Crexi.com. It's where and LoopNet is another one, so write down LoopNet. Um, a lot of times th these are where bad deals go to die around these websites because if it's a really good deal, uh, you know, the broker's probably gonna find a buyer before it ends up on Crexy. However, this is an awesome place to meet brokers. 
because the brokers that are listing properties are going to be listing them on Crexy often or LoopNet. And you can, you've got their contact info right there. You can contact them about that property and, and hey, by the way, I'm looking to build my portfolio by 500 units and in your market in the next year. You know, I'd love to, I'd love to get a chance to meet you. I'd love to uh, get on your list. I'd love to, you know, start a relationship with you. That's how we met a few of our brokers was through those resources. Um, and uh, yeah, so the broker relations game is, we've doubled down on broker relations, we're all in. And we don't go direct to seller anymore, amongst other reasons, because we don't want to compete with our brokers for properties and listings. We want them to know that we're 100% in their court, right? And, and 100% customers, 100% clients of theirs. So um, another way to get into apartment investing is to find or raise capital for, uh, for somebody else's deal, or for your own deal, for that matter. And you might be thinking right away, like, I don't know enough people with enough money. And I'm here to tell you that you do. If you're in this room, you know a lot of money because there's a lot of money in this room, number one. Number two, we live in a, in a day and age where there is a massive amount of capital out there right now. Uh, just in the last two years, it's what, double, Randall, triple, like the amount of capital that's out there. and you know, whether you know it or not, you know a lot of contacts that either have money or know of money, and they're all looking for high yield, risk mitigated investments, like what you're offering. So you can go to a, an active syndicator like myself or other people and say, hey, I'd really like to start raising capital. Could I get a deal from you? Could I, could I get a sample deal from you, right? like maybe a, even a deal that you've already closed, and you take that to your investors and your contacts and you go, hey, this is a deal that, um, I, I, that I ran across that a partner of mine is, and you could say partner, right? Because everybody's a potential partner. A partner, a partner of mine's working on, and uh, I'm considering investing in it myself. Is this something you might be interested in? Or is this like something, if I brought you something like this in the future, might you be interested in checking it out? That's powerful stuff. And that gets conversations going and gets, uh, gets the flow going. Um, another way to, to be involved and to get into apartment investing is to invest your own capital. And again, some of us have this, some of us don't, but our, our minimum investment is 50,000 in our deals. Will go lower if somebody really, really wants in. And I would also, I would also encourage you to try to find syndicators that you can invest with that will educate you throughout the investment. They'll include you in meetings. They'll include you in email chains. They will teach you, somewhat teach you, if not completely teach you, how to do this business. It's one of the best ways to learn is to be an LP or a limited partner in a deal. Uh, another one that I wrote down is being an earnest money investor. So when we write offers on deals, we're, we're putting down a pretty decent sized chunk of earnest money. Like the last one, the one we're working on now is 350,000. That liquidity is something that we sometimes have 10, got it. We sometimes have the liquidity and sometimes we don't, sometimes we need it. So we, we will bring in investors to fund our risk money. And I can tell you more about that later. And the, the last one I have is to either get a job in the industry, in property management, as a lender, as an intern with a lender, as an intern with a broker, become a broker, learn the business while you get paid to perform a certain job in the industry, right? Another way of doing this is to do an unpaid internship, like with a company like mine. We, we've done short unpaid internships in the past, uh, and we're happy to, to bring a, a go-getter along for the ride that can help us out a little bit, and we can teach them the business. So um, I just want to emphasize this point. If you, if you, everything that you need to get a deal done is available on the right partner, right? 
one of the first things people think of is how am I going to qualify for a $20 million loan or a $10 million loan or a $4 million loan? I don't have the credit score, I don't have the track record, I don't have the liquidity required, I don't have the net worth required. One of the smartest things we ever did was invite a, a person that we met in this room who kills it and has been killing it for a long time in Salt Lake City Apartments, worth probably 150, well, his net worth is probably I don't know, 50 million, something like that. His portfolio is worth about 150 million. And we asked him to be on a small deal with us and we gave him ownership in the deal for nothing more than being our advisor, right? So keep us from making mistakes. Um, make sure we're heading in the right direction. He actually ended up, be, ended up investing money in the deal and we've done, I think, five or six other deals with him as our key principal since since that first deal. So he sponsored the loans, he signed on the loans. That's a key partner that you guys wanna start working on and start uh, start nurturing relationships with are, is your key principles. If you guys get a key principal and you have good broker relationships, it's gonna be hard to stop you. So um, I, I know I'm running out of time here a little bit, so I just wanna get to some important action steps that I think you all can can take. I'm going to share a number of them with you. You don't have to do uh, all of them or any of them for that matter, um, but I think that they're absolutely needle movers, as Chelsea and I like to say, in the business and um, will really get you moving forward in, in this industry. So uh, I mentioned we talked before about doing your personal work. Clean up your stuff, clean up your constraints, clean up uh, the stuff that your relationships that you need to, to do to, to get that, that, that freedom in your head and that space in your head to be able to go out and do stuff like this. Um, hire a coach or a mentor. And I said hire, which involves paying for a coach or mentor. I think a paid coach or a paid mentorship is absolutely crucial. Uh, I got into a coaching mastermind with a national uh, syndicator early on, long before we did any deals, and that gave us a lot of confidence to go out and do this business. A paid coach, a paid mentor, it, you're going to get so much more out of than an informal, unpaid mentorship. Uh, number one, they're obligated to you, and you're obligated to them because you, you threw down a check for ten or twelve or twenty thousand dollars. By the way, that might sound like a lot of money for a year's worth of coaching. If you're doing multi-million dollar deals, if you're gonna build a $50 million portfolio, is $12,000 that much money to learn how to do it and make sure you don't make mistakes? Something to consider. Um, go to conferences, guys. There's national conferences. If you email me or Chelsea, I'm tate at glequitygroup.com. So tate at glequitygroup.com. I will send you the list of the, what we consider to be the crucial uh, national conferences. Going, there's nothing that takes the place of going and sitting in a room with 500 people that are leveling up and are doing things that you want to be doing and networking with those people and hearing presentations on how to do them. Chelsea and I met in 2019 at a national conference. She lived in New York at the time. And, uh, and you know, that was, that partnership has been amazing and Chelsea's a huge, important part of our team right now. Um, I'll skip a couple of these. I wanna say one thing is, create your vivid vision. Has anybody seen this book before? Anybody heard of it? Yeah, get this book and do it. A vivid vision is a three-year vision that you write out as the CEO of your company. And if you're a solopreneur right now, you're the CEO. This is something you write out in detail from your metrics to your culture to your team members to your, uh, what your office looks like and feels like. This is really powerful stuff. This is something we did this year. And uh, this, you know, again, what you focus on becomes reality. If you write this stuff out, it'll, it'll happen. Um, find partners. Again, you know, that's, it's all available on partners. Email me for a copy of our credibility. I'm trying to rush through this, Matt, I promise. We have a credibility kit. 
which is also like a company profile that is all about the uh, the insides of Greenlight Equity Group and how we do things in our portfolio and who, who our team is. That's a, it's a five page document that we give brokers and investors. It's something that you all can create right now. If you email me, I will send you ours. You can use it as a template. I'll also send you our vivid vision. If you want uh, to email me for that, just again, just ask me in the email. Um, and uh, you know, tell everyone what you're doing or what you wanna be doing, right? So everybody in your life should know, even if you're a single family person, you wanna stay single family or you know, wholesale and flipping, uh, buy and hold, everybody in your life should know that you do that and that you have an opportunity for them to invest with you in a risk mitigated asset that's gonna make them a lot of money, ideally. Um, so I just wanna point it to you. Chelsea got the flyer out. Um, I'm not here to sell anything. Uh, I just wanted to offer this as a resource to you guys. Um, it's something, this, this coaching program is something I'm starting in at the beginning of September, uh, at the end of the summer. I'm taking like maybe six clients because I don't have enough time to do more than that. But it is gonna be an absolute deep dive into all this stuff. And it's gonna, the sole focus is gonna be getting your first deal, right? And if you've done a deal, it's gonna be getting your next deal on your next bigger deal. Um, so, how are we doing, Matt? You're right on time. Okay, awesome. Right. Let's do this real quick. Okay. Well, actually, should we, we should kind of do Q&As and then book we'll them later? We have yeah, time. But if you're up for sticker, we're gonna be wrapped up here in about 10 minutes. And so, if you're up for sticking around a little longer, you know, squirrel tape in the corner and we'll do it. Can I get this over real quick? Yeah, let's get the right. So. Um, I've got three books here. One's Vivid Vision. Uh, it's, I think it's absolutely key, crucial material. This is an awesome book, Multifamily uh, Investors Who Dominate, How to Be an Elite Investor. It's written by a broker. So the person that we want to get in with wrote us a book on how to do it. And then this book was foundational for me and, and Chelsea and Carl, uh, How to Make Big Money in Small Apartments. It's not really about small apartments. He kind of named it that so you guys can get your head around doing it if you haven't done it before. So real quick, what was the smartest thing we ever did? I think I said that. Yes, sir. Connecting with brokers. That, that, that's that's a, one of the smartest things we ever did, but um, but uh, go ahead. Let's actually stop doing the, the land deal and move on. To right, that's another one. That's a good one. Hey, Private coach. Yeah. You, you brought in a partner. Boom! Uh, Vivid, vivid Vision, good, are you good with that? Have you, have you read it? No, I haven't read it. Okay, um, okay so, um, let me think of something else here. What, um, let's see, um, what's the most important piece of real estate to develop? This one's easy. Dallas, you work your hands first. There you go. You want multifamily investors? So we already have that. You have this one? Yeah. Cool. This one is great. This is an awesome audiobook. The guy is from Texas. He has a thick Texas accent. He reads the book himself. He talks about his business and how he, how he does his real estate business a lot. Yeah, um, yeah it's really good. Uh, Emmanuel just read it or listened to it. Um, what's the name of my podcast? This is the last one. Emily, I saw you first. There you go. Good job. That's the, that was the idea. All right, guys. That's all you got. You're awesome. Thank you. Okay, so, here's the last one to talk about. So,